Hi everyone, it's Marianne and welcome to day 10 of 12 Days of Plant Must. Today I'm sharing with you my top 10 plants in 2010. This is the video that I'm probably most excited about for Plant Must to share with you my top 10 plants in 2020. And in this list, I'm only including plants that I acquired in 2020, plants that I bought, plants that were gifted to me, or plants that I got through a plant swap or plant trade. If you watched my fall plant collection video, you know that I was surprised to see my plant collection double this year. Actually, I am shocked but not surprised that I doubled my plant collection this year. For the about 50 or so plants that I added into my plant collection this year, I'm going to pick about 10 of them to be in my top 10 plants in 2020. I will try my best to not add too many pothos plants in this list and I also pick out some plants that I haven't really talked about much yet in my channel or during plant months. My top 10 list is really more of an arbitrary list of 10 plants that I acquired in 2020 but I think you'd like the plants that I picked out so keep on watching. This is also not going to be in any particular order but the very first one in my top 10 list is my variegated string of hearts. So this one I've actually talked about quite a few times in my channel already but it is one of my favorite plants that I got in 2020. So not only the variegated string of hearts is currently hard to find at least in my area and also very expensive. I got this variegated string of hearts as a gift from one of my subscribers Elizabeth who happens to be the winner of my 1k giveaway. I didn't know she was sending me this. I was very surprised when I received the plant mail along with some other cuttings that I also really love. And this one is a much slower grower than the regular string of hearts but this has already grown quite a bit since I've gotten it from Elizabeth and I find this actually a lot easier to take care of than the regular string of hearts. I haven't experienced any of the same problems that I have experienced with my regular string of hearts that one I've experienced past and severe yellowing. This one so far is just chilling, doing its thing growing slowly but surely and it's a very beautiful plant and, and i'm so happy that i have it as part of my collection and definitely one of my favorite plants in 2020. the second one on my top 10 list is my syndapsis jade satin this one i actually got from a plant trade with someone in a plant facebook group that i'm in she was asking help for her newly acquired syndapsis jade satin and I help her out with her problem with it and after that I shamelessly asked if she was willing to trade some cuttings with me and she so happens was looking for manjula pothos which I had a lot of. So I traded her one of my smaller pots of manjula pothos for some of her cuttings of the Syndapsis Jade Satin and she actually gave me a lot more cuttings than what you see right now but I found the Syndapsis Jade Satin is harder to propagate compared to my other pothos even compared to some of my other Syndapsis so half of the cuttings she gave me actually rotted off and I was only left with about I think three cuttings this is like the original leaf of the cuttings that she originally gave me they're a little bit curled when I got it and I told her I was gonna get it from her anyways because these are the ones that are rooted. I wanted to get a rooted cutting instead of getting cuttings that are not yet rooted just in case and thank god I did that because I lost half of the cuttings she gave me even though they're already rooted. But this one you see right here is a brand new leaf as well as this one and there's also another one that is incoming right over here but yeah this is the second plant in my top 10 list my syndapsis jade satin the third one in my top 10 list is my monstera saltipicana so this is what i have left of my monstera saltipicana well this and another slightly larger pot i used to have a monstera saltipicana in an eight inch pot that i got from lowe's actually at for about 17 or 18 dollars which is probably one of my best finds at a garden center and I couldn't believe that I found a Monstera Saltipicana at Lowe's. But I was experiencing a lot of yellowing with that Monstera Saltipicana. And I know it was already like getting a little bit root bound. And there was already a bit of root rot in that pot. So I separated it into smaller pots. And eventually I sold all of those extra smaller pots. Because I personally didn't need that many Monstera Saltipicana. I'm happy with this size and the other one that I still have left. I actually had a third one that I had in like a 
that was trailing really really long but then that one keeps suffering from root rot and the third time it suffered root rot I couldn't save it anymore the rotting got really bad and the entire plant died but that's okay I still have this one and the other one and I'm really happy with this it is a fast grower kind of like the Cebu blue poppos so I don't really mind being left with a smaller plant and didn't really need that much monstera sulipicana and like I said I only got this for $17 but since I was able to sell off a lot of the smaller extra plants, this plant practically paid for itself and more. So yeah, the third plant in my top 10 list is my Monstera Celtipicana. Number four in my top 10 list is another plant that I've wanted since the beginning of my plant journey, which is the Peperomia prostrata or string of turtles. This is not the same string of turtles that I originally got from a plant trade, which is a much smaller plant that did not grow into this. That one I also ended up either giving or selling away. But this one I bought sometime in the fall. This plant was popping up at Lowe's or Home Depot earlier in the year and people were finding it along with the variegated Hoya Compacta but I could never find it in my local Home Depot or Lowe's but I finally did this fall at least the Peperomia Prostrata or String of Turtles and when I got it, it was pretty much a full plant but probably not trailing as much and not growing all this flower stems. This one is pretty much been staying in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet under the grow light and I think it's been loving the grow light. That's why it has grown so many flower stems. And I know I'm supposed to cut it to promote better growth, but I'm not really looking for it to grow really fast. So I'm just keeping all the flower stems. Fourth one in my top 10 list is my Peperomia prostata or a string of turtles. And the next plant in my top 10 list is the Ficus benjamina snow white variegata. So this is one of the plants that I got from plant here in Chicago. When I got this plant, I didn't really know much about it except that it is a ficus. When I got this, it probably had three, four leaves the most. It looked really struggling and I only paid $10 for it. So I thought it was kind of worth it if it ended up dying. It wouldn't be too bad. I didn't spend a lot of money on it. But I've really grown to love this plant because it looks like a miniature Taniki rubber tree, which is a plant that I've wanted to get for a long time. But I'm really happy that I got this one because this looks exactly like a miniature version of it. And when you have as many plants as I have, it's good to have a smaller version of a plant that I want. I already lost count, but the next one is the Philodendron Brandy. So this is also another plant that I wanted to add to my Pothos collection and I got this one at a Facebook marketplace. It was a rooted cutting. It was already putted up and I got it in a pretty much good condition with only just this large leaf and probably this leaf. But then when I received this leaf, the stem was broken off. So as you can see, I just tied it up in hopes to save it. But it has started to yellow but this one has been yellowing for quite some time and it still hasn't died off i'm just gonna keep this large leaf for as long as i can i'm not gonna cut it off but it has a couple of new growth since and it has another one incoming i don't like a lot of philodendrons but i do like this one and i think i got this one for about 18 dollars, which is not bad because this plant goes also for a very high price whether you buy it online or in nursery shops or if you're lucky to ever find this at a garden center. Next plant in my top 10 list is the Shangri Ulala Pothos. So this pothos is a funny looking pothos. It looks like sautéed spinach. This one's considered a rare epipenum. I got this from Etsy for $30 as a cutting, which is kind of expensive, but if you actually look at the prices of this one for a non-variegated Shangri La Pothos, it's actually a lot more expensive than the price that I got this one and this one is a variegated sleeping pothos but I really enjoyed having it so far it's currently propagating in moss because when I got it it had a little bit of roots but not a lot so I'm trying to get it to grow a lot more roots so far it hasn't given me any new growth yet but I expected this to be a very slow grower but I'm really excited to have this as part of my collection because I didn't think that I would be able to add it to my pothos collection so soon. That is the Shangri Ulala pothos, another plant in my top 10 list. So the next one in my top 10 list is one of those plants that were really trendy and hard to get at first, but now you can pretty much find them everywhere. And it's 
the ZZ Raven. So I do have the regular ZZ plant and I got this ZZ Raven actually from a plant trade at H Street Farms. And I like this plant because of the coloring. It is unique. It has that darker leaf color. As you can see against my wall color here, how it really pops and it's such a beautiful plant. And like I said, this has become more accessible ever since Costa Farms started carrying it in their Life Trends collection. But this one I actually didn't get from Costa Farms. I did get it from a local plant nursery called H Street Farms in DC but as a plant swap with the owner of the nursery. So this is another plant in my top 10 list, the ZZ Raven. I think this is the second to the last plant in my top 10 list and this is a wishlist plant that I had from last year which is the Hoya Crimson Princess. <laughs> it's in my mouth. As you can see it's so large I could barely fit it in the frame. I pretty much got it this size though of course it has grown quite a bit ever since I've gotten this. I think I got this sometime around early summer along with my other pot of Humanchula pothos. Again, I also found this in Lowe's. I don't really have a lot of local nurseries in my area and I would have to travel quite a bit to get to them. So the closest garden center to me is a Lowe's and that is the one that I often go to and where I get most of my plants. And this one is in my top 10 list not because it was just a wishlist plant but because this is such an easy care plant I would say even a lot easier than some of my pothos because this one kind of like with the ZZ Raven, I only water this once a month and so far no pest problems with it. It would have some dried leaves every now and then but not too much that it is alarming. But kind of like my Hoya Crimson Queen, I love that how it grows some pink leaves at the beginning which turns into white variegation later on but it also produces some solid color green leaves which is kind of like a regular Hoya Carnosa. I haven't gotten any of my Hoyas to flower yet. I'm excited to see if this one will ever flower but so far right now I love it the way it is and yeah this is the second to the last plant in my top 10 list the Hoya Crimson Princess. And the last plant in my top 10 list is my Thai Constellation Monstera. I already talked about this and day nine of plant mus. So i'm not gonna repeat what i said over there but this is a wishlist plant as well and one of the plants that i imported from thailand and it is looking so beautiful and i'm really glad to finally have it in my plant collection but yeah my battery is running out that's why i'm rushing but yes those are my top 10 plants in 2020 thank you so much for watching and i'll see you at day 11 of 12 days of plant mus. bye